Over the last few years, I've owned some legendary synthesizers like the Juno 106, Moog Sub 37, Prophet 5. They all sound amazing, but to be honest, I don't think they're worth that large of an investment. I mean, unless you got it like that. VSTs have gotten pretty spot on at recreating legendary synths and drum machines, and they're only a fraction of the price. So what's the point of spending thousands of dollars on these synths anymore? Good news for us, they all don't cost that much. The last couple months, I've gotten super into synths again, but this time I've been trying to find the craziest, most overlooked synth from the 80s. Since no one really talks about these, not that many people are buying or selling them, so they're usually very affordable. I've been watching hundreds of videos, some weirder than others of people demoing all these random keyboards and when I found the Casio HT6000 I was immediately blown away. The HT6000, released in 1987, was a huge expansion of Casio's home keyboard line in the 80s. Unfortunately, this synth was a complete marketing fail. Because of the plastic casing, beginner-friendly icons, and even speakers on the actual synth, most people wrote this off as just another consumer-level home keyboard. If you look past the appearance of it, the sounds that it produces are very similar to the $50,000. Yamaha CS80 and the $5,000 Juno 60. So for the last couple weeks, I've been trying to find one. And that's exactly when I met the man that can make my dreams a reality. A very special man named Justin had one listed for sale in the city next to mine. Yo. So yesterday, I ended up linking with Justin. Bro was extremely chill. I met him at a Chick-fil-A parking lot. Yo. Anyways, here's a view of what's going down. As you can see, I'm very locked into the synthesization cubicle right now. This is a Yamaha DX27. If y'all heard of the Yamaha DX7, this is just like a simpler version of that pretty much. And then here we have the Casio HT6000 in the flesh. It ain't looking too bad after I clean it up a little bit. And both of these fellas are running into this mixer right here. The main reason I use this is because the chorus on it is super fire. It's got a bunch of built-in effects in it. That don't really matter because I'm having to run it into mono right now because you already know I'm sticking with the sacred red box and I'm using the other input for my mic. So for the small amount I've used it so far, I ain't gonna lie, it sounds pretty crazy. It's a little bit confusing at first, but I ran through the manual, kinda got like a basic understanding of how to use it. Got this J37 on it, not making that much of a difference, I don't even know why I have it on there. Then a Tau chorus after it, which is a free plugin, it emulates the chorus from the Juno. That preset's insane, that's one of my favorites. A lot of the synths I've used takes me a second to like get a vibe on it. I don't know how to explain it, but um, this is pretty fire. It kind of came with the Desrite presets in a way. It's this button you press on it and it splits the keyboard. So like, you got a bass sound too. That bass sounds super fire. Pretty much just has all the warm chorus C80 sounds. Kind of ahead of its time because it also has like a built-in chord thing. If I turn it on and press one note, I think that's a major chord. Press the two notes beside it. It can like turn into a seventh. I don't know. I've never really used it. It also has drums on it. Turn the chorus off. Kind of like a Lynn drum. Okay, so I figured out how to actually be able to play all the different drum sounds. They're kind of fire. It reminds me of like a Majid Jordan, old Drake, like Feel No Ways vibe, you know, where it's like. But like probably pitched down or something. Got some bongos. The hats are kind of fire. Nice. So on that note, I think I might start with some drums. Uh, let me make a new track here. By the way, I'm still on Ableton. My bad to the good people over at ImageLine. Still rock with FL, but I really don't know what else to say as far as that situation goes.
Okay, so I recorded all these drum sounds in. I didn't really like uh, this other snare. This one has potential. I may sound crazy right now, but let them cook. Got the hi-hat. Got the open hat. This one. I don't really know where that's going to come into play, but I'm kind of rocking with it. We got all our drum sounds. I'm going to get a little surgical on the snare right quick just because I got a vision for it. First off, I'm going to pitch it down a little bit. All right, check me out. I'm going to duplicate it. Um, I'm going to time stretch this one just a little bit so the tail of it's longer. And I'll just use the transient from the first one so that it's still punchy. I'm going to consolidate that into one snare, but I'm not done there. I'm going to throw an OTT on this guy. It's a free plugin. And I'm going to do some upwards compression. That sounds a little intense. Instead of making the louder parts quieter, it'll make the quieter parts louder. Without OTT on, and with it on. That's what it sounds like. So yeah, it just kind of makes it sound more like a Majid Jordan snare. Throw a Soothe on here, just to make sure I get this thing perfect. Let's see what harsh snare sounding like on it. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Right, I'm feeling pretty good about my snare now, so I'm going to just print this. Kick's also not sounding the best. I'm going to throw a DBX compressor on it. Um, this is just like a super punchy compressor. See if I can get it hitting a little better. Just put a tiny bit of saturation on it uh, from this free plugin called Disc Talks, and that should be good for the kick. That sounded kind of crazy with the hi-hat. I'll make them a little bit shorter here. took the very tip of the transient on the kick and like cut it off on this kick so it sounds softer. And so I'm gonna throw a J37 on the whole group and throw some saturation on it. Uh, it sounds to me like we got the drums pretty much yamming. I like this sound, but the filter is like way too harsh on it. So I'm gonna mess with it for a second. Might mess around, pitch it down a little bit. I'ma pan this to the left, and I'ma layer another sound just doing the same chords and have it pan to the right. Line all this up too. CLA on both of these grouped together just to kind of smooth everything out. Yeah, I wanted like a pitch bend like that at the beginning. I'm gonna do it here too, but on the other side. Alright, sick. So for this next part, I'm now gonna whip it out. Yeah, that's right. The Yamaha DX27, baby. I'm gonna use this more as like a mid range. Sound not like an actual bass.
sit down again in usual fashion. I'm going to hop back on the Casio, see if I can uh, get like a little lead vibe going, you know what I'm saying? My bad, I had to tune my, uh, tune my keyboard here. I think I hit it that time. And I'm gonna throw some spring reverb on this. A shout out to Audio Thing. I feel like they make the best space echo. I just gotta hit like a crazy chord at the beginning, like a... Uh, I'm gonna throw some sketch cassette on this. Just to give it some pitch drift. I keep changing the pitch so much. I always do this when I make beats. All right, I feel like I could use one more layer to like piece everything together. And I'm going to keep it going with all the pitch automation stuff I've been doing. been talking I ain't used to uh all this cooking up on camera stuff oh it'd be crazy if I played a different bass pattern right here around here. And I'm gonna try and come up with different chords to match this other bass line I just did. Throw some space echo on that guy. There is one thing I want to try. There's this Ableton effect called Beat Repeat, and there's this preset called Microfills. I was messing with this earlier. If you get the settings right, like it can sound pretty crazy. So 
So I'm gonna just make a new audio track and route um, the group audio to it and just let this thing do its thing for a minute. want to do that for some reason for the one time but uh i think we got all the layers we need i know the drums don't sound like the most amazing but i kind of like how they sound like trash to be honest it's kind of a vibe <laughs> 